do all ice cream milkshakes perform the same? I've shown two milkshakes here. One's from Chick-fil-A and one's from Black Tap. They don't cost the same and I've eaten them both. And ladies and gentlemen, they do not perform the same. So do all curing compounds perform the same? I'm gonna try to answer that question today. My name is Tyler Lay and I'm a concrete freak. Here's a gentleman applying a curing compound to the surface of finished concrete. God bless you. Thank you for finishing out that project. This is what it looks like when it's done. That is what curing is supposed to look like with curing compounds. A uniform layer, like a white sheet of typing paper. Now this isn't quite right. Do you see some of those splotches and spots? They didn't cure enough. Now you see this one? This big, large, important project where they've only painted a few swirls here and there. Now let's explain how curing compounds work. When they're applied to the surface, you can have a solvent. That's something that they're suspended in. And then you have your pigment and your polymer. And over time, your solvent is gonna evaporate off the surface. And that's the stuff you can smell sometimes. And once it starts to leave, then the polymers kind of get closer together and then eventually they bridge and form a layer on the surface of your concrete that helps hold moisture in. This is like painting. If you've ever painted a room, it's the same type of thing. In this experiment, we're gonna make very, very long and thin beams that are made out of paste. They have a 0.42 water to cement ratio. We're gonna cure them with different curing compounds and also different coverage rates. We're gonna seal the beams on all the surfaces but the top where they're finished because that's where the curing compound's gonna go and we're gonna see how it performs. We're gonna store the beams at a 40% relative humidity in 73 degrees Fahrenheit and after removing from the mold, we're gonna put wax on all the sides but that surface. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is what an overall sample looks like with its dimensions, kind of like concrete skis. And this is what it looks like in the drying room. It's got wax on all the sides, but right up here, that's where the curing compound goes. Then water's gonna try to evaporate from the surface. The top is gonna try to shrink. We're gonna measure what the weight change is, but we're also gonna measure how much it curls. And if you don't believe me, check it out. They curl like bananas. Here's the finished surface on its side. This is where the curing compound goes. We have wax over here. Why do we do this? because we don't want gravity to hold it down. We wanna see how much it wants to cure. This is the max amount of deflection that we can measure at the center. We're gonna use a caliper to do it. Now these curing compounds do not cost the same. The wax base is the cheapest, followed by the resin, followed by the pans. I don't have exact costs here because these things change, but this is the ratio at the time that I tested them. And we're gonna apply these curing compounds extremely uniformly with this crazy cooked up machine that we made. This is a very, very rigid frame. We can hold the cure at a very known distance. We can use a constant pressure. We can move at a constant speed. How do we know we can move at a constant speed? Because we use a metronome and we move the car every time the metronome hits a beat and we cover that. We also can measure the amount of, of curing we could put down on things like steel plates and we can make sure that we get the right coverage. Now I will put this curing cart up against any professional curing cart out there. I'm ready to battle. Now if we show here, this is the age on the x-axis and this is the weight change on the y-axis. The not cured sample lost a lot of mass. Why? Because it doesn't have a curing compound. The wax does a little bit better, the resin does a little bit better, and the PAMS does the best. All of this was done at the manufacturer recommended coverage rate. This is what the curling looks like. No curing, pow, jumps way up, wax is left, less, resin is even less, and PAMS is even less. Again, we used the manufacturer recommended coverage rate. All the curing compounds perform better than not curing. PAMS was the best followed by resin and then wax. That's the same order as cost. So how does this change with different coverage rates? What a great question. What I'm talking about is, what if I put more curing on? Or what if I put less curing on? How's that gonna change stuff? Or what if I put a double layer? Let's look at it in this plot. On the y-axis, I'm showing the mass loss after 72 hours. 
On the x-axis, I'm showing how much curing compound we put on the surface. This dotted line here is the manufacturer recommended dosage. Here is a single layer of wax. There is a double layer, 33% increase. Here's the resin and here's the PAM, same order we saw before. Let's look at how much curling happened. Again, there is the wax, there is the double layer. This doesn't mean twice as much. This means half as much the first, then half as much the second, and that sums together to get the same amount as if you did it in a single layer. We compare that to resin, then again we compare that to PAMs. Look at this. We can use way less PAMs and it actually performs really well, but that's not true for our single layer. Look at that. Here's our no curing line. If we don't get enough curing compound on, if we're not at the manufacturer recommended dosage for curing compound, it's the same as not curing. The double layer is better than a single layer. All curing compounds showed improvements with increased coverage. As costs went up, so did performance, and PAMS by far was the best. And you could even use less than recommended, and it performed really well. Be careful in this testing. Who knows what it'll do in the field, but in this testing, it looked great. So what does this mean? Number one, not all curing compounds are the same, just like not all milkshakes are the same. PAMS was the least sensitive to coverage and showed the best performance, and wax-based wax curing compounds did not perform significantly better than not curing at all. So as cost went up, so did performance, but at the same coverage rate, two layers is better than one. Why? Because it's just like paint. When you do a single layer of a coating, you are going to get pinholes. You're going to not get the best coverage. But if I use two layers, I'm going to cover up and see those pinholes close up. If you are in a dry climate and you're concerned about curling, then do not wet cure your slabs or pavements for extended periods. You wanna learn more? Watch this video that my student Amir put together. Check it out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you dug this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Think about subscribing and ask me what comments or questions do you have about curing? Because I've done a lot of videos about it. You should check them out. And of course, you can find me on Instagram at concrete.tyler. Bye bye